So here we are in Python Tutor. We define our function and now we're going to print the prime product of this list. Again, we can see in this list the two prime numbers are 2 and 13. So the answer we're expecting is 2 times 13 or 26. Let's see how the code actually works. We now call the prime product function. Data is this list. We jump into the body of the function and we initialize product equal to 1, our accumulator. Now we examine each i in data. So the first value that i is going to take is of course 1 because that's the first value in our list. Now is this i greater than or equal to 2? Of course it isn't. So we skip past the body of the if. Since there are no more statements inside the body of this for loop, this red arrow, when I click next, jumps back to the top and we examine the next value of i. Well, the next value of i is of course 2, so i is initialized to 2. This is indeed greater than or equal to 2, so we come in here. And now, just like before, we have to examine this range of uh, values j, starting at 2, up to, but not including, 2. Remember, this is the same sort of calculation as we have seen earlier. So this is an empty range and we immediately realize there are no values j to check. So we're done with all values of j. Did we encounter a break? No. We never went into the body of the loop. We never hit this break statement. So where will the red arrow go? To the no break condition, namely the else. So you'll see when I click on next, the red arrow jumps to line 9. We're now inside the else and we can take this value of i, which is 2, and multiply it into our accumulator, which is currently 1. So the next value that product will take will be 1 times 2, which is 2, and we move on and examine the next value of i. The next value of i is 13, which is greater than or equal to 2. So now we're examining different values of j. Of course, we know in advance, since 13 is a prime, that none of these values of j that we will check is indeed a factor. But I want you to pay attention to the control flow here. Notice that i is 13. Now you will see j take on different values, but the value of i will remain fixed. So whenever we have an inner for loop and an outer for loop, it's important to remember that the value of the variable over which we are iterating, in this case i, will stay fixed for a while and we will examine multiple values of j. You will see that happening right now. And when all these values of j have been exhausted, then we will move on to the next value of i. So the way to think about it is, this value i is changing very slowly and this value j is changing quickly. This statement is happening again and again for different values of i and for a given value of i, we examine multiple values of j. Again, let's see this happening. So currently i is 13. So this range is from 2 up to but not including 4. If you recall, uh, the square root of 13 is 3 point something and so that plus 1 will give us the range up to 4, so we will go look at 2 and 3, but we won't look at 4. So now when we go here, we see that j is 2. So for the value i equal to 13 and j equal to 2, is this statement true? No, of course it's not. So we skip to the next value of j. The next value of j is 3. Notice i has not changed, but j has. And we check, is uh, 3 a factor of 13? Again, it's not. So we look for the next value of j. Now we find there are no more values of j in the range 2 comma 4. So we skip out of the for loop. Did we see a break? No. So we go to the else case and we multiply 13 by our product, which is currently 2. So the product now becomes 26. And now we jump back and look for the next value of i. And the next value of i is uh, 21. 
which is greater than or equal to 2. So now we are examining values of j uh, again in the range 2 comma 5, so 2, 3 and 4. Once again, keep your eye on i and j. i is 21, j starts off at 2, 2 is not a factor, so we skip and look at the next value of j, which is 3. 3 is a factor, so pay close attention to the control flow here. We come into the if condition because we've just found that the statement on line 6 is true and now we break which means we exit this inner loop and that means we will not go into the else condition because the, remember the else condition is reserved for the no break case. So watch where the red arrow goes. When I click on next, I jump back to the top because there are no more statements. If there were more statements between lines 9 and 10 that were part of the outer loop but not part of the inner loop, then this break statement would actually have taken you there. I encourage you to try this out. It's very simple. You can edit the code and insert a line in here. You don't have to necessarily do something. There is a special statement, pass which does absolutely nothing but it just inserts a line over there and you can insert a pass statement and observe the control flow. But for this uh, problem let's examine the next value of i. Remember currently we're looking at i equals 21. Well in this list there are no more values of i. So when I click on next I'm going to exit this for loop. Now, for this outer for loop, there is no else statement. So, I'll just simply come to line 10 and return this product, which is 26. So, this value 26 is going to be returned and this value is going to be printed finally up here. 